Hey guys, and welcome back to Z3 Cubing. Today I'm going to show you the Hey Cube, the world's first all in one, no app, smart cube. If you've been watching my channel over the last few years, you'd probably be able to describe the concept of a smart cube, an electronic Rubik's cube that can tell what moves you're doing on it and connects to your phone so that an app can teach you how to solve it, keep track of your solves, and allow all sorts of other functionality. And if you were talking about any of the smart cubes I've reviewed so far, well, you'd be completely correct. But back in 2016, before any of these were even available, a couple of engineers had a different vision for making a smart version of a Rubik's Cube. If you think about it, there's nothing really smart about any of these cubes. They're really just a Bluetooth chip, a battery, and a bunch of sensors. Nothing more than an expensive Rubik's Cube on their own. They really only become smart when you connect them to a smartphone. And that's where the Hey Cube comes in. This is the world's first all-in-one smart cube. It promises to teach you how to solve the cube, or just do some cool patterns, without ever having to connect to an app. Everything you need comes right in the box. Of course, there still is an app available with all of your favorite smart cube features. Plus there's even an API to allow you to program your own features right into the cube. But for the time being, let's check out the puzzle itself and try out its standalone functionality. So it looks like right here on the front, we have a QR code, which just tells you the basics of how to use it. We also have Hey Cube on the top here and this cube is lit, which is true. You may not have thought about it yet, but in order for this cube to tell you what to do, it has to have some sort of user interface. And they actually do that using these little circular lights. So there's this little circle on each side of the cube, and you'll see in a minute how these light up and tell you which sides to turn. Anyway, in the box we have this little instruction booklet, a micro USB cable, as well as the cube itself with this little charger dock. So you just plug the cable into the dock with it attached to these two sides of the cube, and charge it just like you would anything else over USB. It's supposed to charge pretty quickly and last a long time. So let's just get this off of here and try out some first turns. So here we go. And you can already see that little light there flashing around the white side. So as you can see, it's currently moving in a clockwise circle, and that's telling me to do a clockwise move on that side. And now it's switched to the red side, so I'm gonna do a clockwise move on that side. And now it's going counterclockwise around the white side. I'll do that move, and then it wants me to do that move. So it's already just telling me how to solve it, and there we go. It's now doing a cool little pattern and playing a little song. Now I believe the idea is that if you do a smaller number of moves, like I just did, it'll just tell you to do the reverse of those moves to solve it. Whereas if you do a whole bunch of moves, I think it's more than 14, then it'll just start from scratch and show you how to do it using the beginner's method. So let's try it out by first doing around 10 moves. So maybe we'll just do like the first half of a J perm, plus a couple other random moves, and then pretend we didn't know what we did. And now it's wanting me to turn this side, and then this side, and it looks like now we're just undoing the J perm, exactly what I did to get it here. And that's because that was less than 14 moves. What if I make a mistake though? Yep, it just tells me to undo that mistake, and then we're going straight back to these moves, and now we have solved the cube once again. I was worried that it might be a little bit difficult and time consuming to look around the cube, figure out which light is flashing and what direction it wants you to turn it, but in fact, it was actually pretty easy and quite fun. For someone like me, who's a lot more experienced with reading algorithms, it's of course gonna be faster with a traditional smart cube where you can just read the moves off the screen. But the primary mode of this cube seems to be geared much more towards beginners who are just learning how to solve the cube and are probably much less familiar with basic notation. And so for that kind of person, this might be really helpful. So now that we've definitely done more than 14 moves, let's try it out. So first it wants me to turn this side this way, maybe getting that cross piece in. And then yeah, we solved the red one. It made an extra little noise there. Now I guess we're gonna do the blue one. Yep, that makes sense, just like that. And now we're gonna turn this again that way. And again that way, I think we just did a D3. That's kind of weird. Uh, do that, get this piece in. And oh, we got all of them in. Okay, I think I did it a little bit more efficiently than it wanted me to. By the way, I realized that it might be a little bit hard to see and hear the lights and sounds of the cube on camera, but I assure you that the lights are plenty bright in person and the sounds are a little bit quiet, but definitely audible. So let's move on to the first layer. It looks like it wants me to turn this side first and then this side. I guess we're putting in that corner piece, then that side. So even as a pretty experienced cuber, it's still a little bit tricky to figure out why I'm doing any particular turn. It kind of feels like I only realized what piece I was moving halfway through the case, but I think with some practice, it will get a little bit more natural. Like this next step, the second layer is pretty repetitive. So it should always be pretty obvious what piece you're working on. It's always gonna be right in front of you. It looks like it does stop to load in between and figure out the next piece to solve, which is kind of annoying, but I guess it's looking for the most efficient one to solve. Yeah, there we go. Now we're gonna do this one. But yeah, at the very least, a beginner is gonna have to look at the instructions or look at that QR code, which gives you the basic steps of solving the cube. And maybe for the last layer steps, you're gonna have to watch the tutorial to figure out why you're doing the algorithms. But after that, I think it is plausible that a beginner could learn to solve on this cube. 
So it looks like we're doing four look last layer here. Luckily we got a really easy OLL case. And what I will say is that this would be really useful for maybe the few days or weeks that you're learning how to solve a cube and just memorizing those algorithms. But for anybody who already knows how to solve a cube or doesn't intend to learn, I would say that the basic mode on this cube isn't particularly useful. I guess it would be a lot nicer if it would just solve it move optimally every time, or you know, maybe just under like 25 moves. That way you could always just solve the cube efficiently and then you could switch it on to a different mode if you specifically wanted to to learn how to solve it. But anyway, that's just my opinion. But speaking of different modes, let's try out the different modes. So I believe by default it's called hint mode. That's what we've been using to solve the cube. And there's an arbitrary sequence of moves that you can do to turn that on or off. There's also a different sequence to turn it onto pattern mode. And that sequence is with white on top and green in front, of course. F prime, F prime, U prime, U prime, U, U, F, F. And it makes a little noise and it now turns into pattern mode. So let's see, what are we gonna do? We're gonna turn the green side, orange side. I have no idea what pattern we're doing. I'm not sure if it's just random or if it maybe goes through the patterns in a specific order, but it looks like we now have a cube and a cube pattern. So there we go. I actually don't know the algorithm for that. So maybe this is actually pretty useful for me. So yeah, that's actually pretty cool. This could really be useful for pretty much anyone ranging from a complete beginner to even myself. I didn't even know this pattern existed. I kind of want to just keep going and see what other patterns it makes. Okay, one last one. And it looks like we got a cube and a cube in a cube this time. So that's pretty cool. Anyway, yeah, I really enjoy this pattern feature. It's obviously a lot more useful to me than the learning how to solve feature, but since we basically hit the end of what we can do with the cube on its own, let's go ahead and get our smartphone out, download the app, and see what else it can do. All right, I just got the app set up. It was honestly really easy. I just made an account and connected it with Bluetooth. A lot less hassle than some of the other smart cubes I've used before. The app looks pretty basic, but it seems like it has most of the normal functionality. Right there at the top, there's a button that says hints, and so I think right now it's still, yeah, giving us hints on how to solve it. But if we go ahead and turn that off, and then start turning the cube. Yeah, now it doesn't tell us anything. And if we solve it, it still does a little celebration. Wait a minute, does it turn the hints back on after every time you solve it? Yeah, it does. So that's something that they need to fix. Anyway, if we open up the patterns menu, I assume this is basically the same thing as we were doing before, except now it gives us a choice of which pattern we wanna do, which is awesome. So we can just go ahead and click on something like vertical stripes and then it gives us the instructions on how to do that particular pattern. So as we do this, it looks like it is following along with the moves that we're doing on the cube, just like on a normal smart cube, but it doesn't tell you the actual algorithm on the app, which would be extremely useful if you're more comfortable with using notation. Anyway, this is basically the very first version of the app. It was actually released on the Play Store yesterday, so you'd expect there to be lots of little unpolished things, but the good thing is that they're able to fix those things and improve as time goes on. Anyway, let's go ahead and check out what the challenges menu is. So we can click on world record, and I guess this probably just gives us world record scrambles that have happened in the past. Uh, that's funny, it doesn't actually have the real world record on there right now. And I imagine those little icons should actually be pictures of the scramble, but oh well. Let's go ahead and check out what friendly is. There are no challenges available, probably because I have no friends yet. Uh, daily. Okay, so it's gonna give us a scramble. Let's see what happens. So it looks like we just did a random scramble. Maybe it just chooses a new one every day. Again, it would be really useful to have the algorithm actually on the app, but I guess now the goal is to solve it as fast as possible. So let's go ahead and begin in three, two, one, go. I will say that the turning of this cube isn't great, but it's not bad either. It's definitely not a Rubik's brand, but it's not quite a GAN cube either. So yeah, I believe it does have magnets. They're a little bit loose inside the pieces, which is why the cube is so loud. Um, but go ahead and do a T-perm. We can solve it in 16 seconds. Nice little fireworks there. That's not a bad time. I feel like I probably could have solved it one or two seconds faster with a better cube, but for a beginner, I'd say the turning is totally acceptable. Anyway, let's just go back to the main menu here. We have tutorials, which is basically the same thing as you get with the QR code, just a bunch of videos on how to do different things on the cube. Basically, how to use the cube without needing the app. And finally, we have the timer mode. My fear is that it, once again, is not gonna give us the actual algorithms and we're gonna have to follow the little circly things. So, Oh wait, no, it doesn't give us a scramble at all. We just have to scramble the cubes ourselves. So yeah, that's a little bit of an oversight. I would say definitely give us an algorithm. The way it works right now, I would say is very beginner centric, like using hand scrambles isn't really a problem for them. But if you're actually speed cubing on it, you're gonna want an official scramble. Anyway, let's go ahead and do one last solve real quick. So three, two, one, and go. 
And overall, I would say that the app is probably the biggest weakness of this cube at the moment. There's lots of little features like, you know, a leaderboard, online battle modes, even a fully featured timer or fun games that are just missing at the moment. Luckily, they could be added in the future, but for the time being, it's hard to really recommend it if you're planning on using it mostly with the app. That could all change in the future though. I would say that with a better app more akin to the other smart cubes on the market, that this would be a perfectly fine smart cube for even an intermediate solver. And I think the extra little circular lights add a whole lot that those other smart cubes don't have. For example, if it could recognize every single OLL and PLL, and then you could put your own algorithms in there and have that hint mode always running, that would be super useful for even a more advanced solver trying to learn some algorithms. And that's not even to mention the programming aspect of this cube. I haven't been able to try it out myself yet, but basically you can attach it to a Raspberry Pi, which is basically a super cheap little computer. And then you can use a library in Python to program basically anything using the sensors, lights, and sounds of this cube. You can make your own games, your own patterns, your own music, maybe even an algorithm trainer like the one I was just talking about. And that's where I see the most potential in this cube. The hardware is super solid, maybe lacking a little bit in speed cube ability, but once the app improves and we're able to program anything we want into the cube, I mean, there's just so many options and you can basically do anything. I imagine these will be very popular in schools as a tool to help teach programming. And if that sounds exciting to you, it definitely does to me, then that's probably the main person I would recommend this cube to. It is $99, which is quite a lot, but it does offer a lot of unique features compared to other smart cubes. If you're just into speed cubing, I mean, get the GAN I carry, it's $37 and really good for that one purpose. But for the beginner hint and pattern modes, and especially the programming capabilities and these little circular lights, you really can't get that anywhere else. And so I'll put the link down in the description to where you can get it at their website. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this video on the newest and arguably most interesting smart cube to be released in a long time. I really hope you all enjoyed. I'll see you guys next time.